harvest time at Crystal Brook in South Australia's mid-north. The header's on auto steer. The yield monitor is recording yield, grain moisture and position data, the essentials necessary to produce yield maps. Precision Ag at work. While Malcolm Sargent sits at the controls, son Andrew sits in the ute, doing battle with a tablet, trying to show me yesterday's yield map. But if I zoom in, it, it's like stuck to the Don't picture. So this is my life. <laughs> So we've been involved with Precision Ag probably for just over 20 years now, I'd say. Um, so Dad was one of the guys that started SPA, the Southern Precision Ag Association. That was started, I guess, out of frustrations with compatibility between different manufacturers in the early days of, of Precision Ag. SPA now stands for the Society of Precision Agriculture Australia and is a national umbrella group supporting the use of precision ag in different industries. The sergeants were early adopters. I think 99, 98, 99 was when we got into yield monitoring with an ag leader yield monitor and we got auto steer, two centimetre auto steer in about 2001 and we had a Topcon rate controller, variable rate controller for an air seater back then as well so we were trying to get those sort of three systems to all, all play together. Getting them to play together took some time and Andrew Sargent says while there have been some great advances in technology, allowing growers to make better informed judgments at harvesting, seeding and fertilising, it doesn't work as seamlessly as he'd like. You want it to just work when you need it to work and yeah, quite often that's, that's not the case. He says auto steering headers and seeders have been a standout in terms of farmer take up and making the job easier although there are often compatibility issues between equipment and across brands. But it's variable rate seeders that he's had the most trouble with. I guess our biggest issue was with variable rate was getting maps out of the software into a format that the, the controller on the seeder would read, and getting the controller to reliably run those maps. In 2019, Andrew set off overseas on a Nuffield scholarship to see if other places were working through the compatibility gremlins in the precision ag technology. He was particularly interested in the use of open source tech. Most ag tech is proprietary, so it's closed source. I was just sort of interested in looking at other industries, sort of IT, robotics, where they've developed more of an open ecosystem, which has helped them move forward faster, and how we could bring some of that into, into ag and maybe make our lives a bit easier. Andrew admits to doing a lot of thinking when he's sitting at the chaser bin and feels open source is definitely part of the solution, where the programs for the various bits of equipment are freely available. Anyone can modify it. I guess with the open source stuff, no one really owns it. Um, so then on the flip side, I guess everyone owns it. So you need to get that critical mass. You need to get enough of a, a community following it that it's not just one, one guy trying to, trying to keep it running. They have forums that are supported just by community members, just other farmers that have made contributions to the project um, and they're happy to answer questions. And he says timely access to your data is essential. If you've got a question, you want to answer that now so you can action something about it now. You don't want to go back and sit down and reprocess your yield data you know, in three months' time because that doesn't help you now make a decision. Andrew Sargent feels there are real opportunities for grower groups to jump on board and help with data collection such as spray records. And they could also supply an open source platform that farmers can use to put the data in, which gives flexibility to change service providers without having to go through the hassle of adapting to a whole new tech ecosystem. Farmers themselves are really good at working together and as an industry I think that's helped drive us forward a lot faster than what it would have had we all done our own thing. And I think the same thing can apply to, to ag tech as well if, if we sort of collaborate more and we're not all doing our own thing, we're not all reinventing the wheel, we might actually get to some, some useful solutions for farmers sooner, which would be great.